Welcome to the Veeam Data Cloud for M365 demo series. In this video series, we'll start by exploring the main dashboard for the Veeam Data Cloud for M365. From there, we'll look at general settings and administration, including role-based access control. We'll look at backup policies, creating backup policies, and administrating them. We'll look at reporting and scheduling of reports. We'll also look at the search capabilities across the M365 tenant. And then finally, we'll look at data restoration for each of the M365 applications, Outlook, OneDrive, SharePoint, and Teams. Let's get started. Welcome to the main dashboard for Veeam Data Cloud for M365. Upon initial successful backup with your M365 tenant connected to the Veeam Data Cloud, you will start to see a dashboard similar to this. In the upper left-hand corner, overall storage capacity. Then you'll see backed up users that are current in protection policies the retention period for those backed up users and environment, your M365 license activity, active licenses versus ones that we haven't seen data moving in the last 31 days, a chance to possibly clean up your M365 tenant and reallocate licenses, Veeam data cloud licenses that you've currently purchased, and then an overall storage use for your top five users. And in this case here, you'll see that we're big Game of Thrones fans and Jon Snow is the M365 global admin for this Veeam data cloud demo environment. That'll be useful when we start talking about role-based access control and security settings later on in this video series. Scrolling down, you see the four main data buttons for restoration activities for Outlook, SharePoint, OneDrive, and Teams. Also reflected here on the left-hand side in this navigation pane. I will note that this navigation pane never goes away and is part of the console no matter where you are in different areas, whether it be in backup policies, reporting, or in restoration, this navigation pane will always be there. If you scroll down, you will see the recent user activity. These are things that, in this case here, you'll see our M365 global admin, Jon Snow, has done different restoration operations across different M365 applications and for different users. And you can dive in and view additional detail by clicking on that button right there and see different operations that have gone beyond what was in the main dashboard. If I go back out... What we're going to do next in this video series is start to move over to system administration and general settings, so stay with us. To get started in general settings and administration, we're going to go over to the lower left-hand side in the navigation pane and start to look at the options down here. We're going to start off by looking at notifications. These are activities that have happened, say, in the last 30 minutes or so, and you can see currently right now there is a restoration operation going on. If you want to view more events in the activity log, you can click the link above and you can see a few different events that have gone on and potentially even some files that you might be able to download here. In this case here, somebody had set off a uh, scheduled report and it's available here for download. If I go back to the lower left hand side and I'll click on settings, this is where we have the general administration. By default, the first thing you see is the role setting. This is role based access control. When you first get set up in the M365 uh, environment for Veeam Data Cloud, you will see the first role administrator already built out for you. You can create as many roles as you want, and this is where it would be helpful where if you have a help desk or a series of power users that are going to assist with restorations, or you want to set up self-service, this is where you could do some of that. If I click on Add New Role, you will see that you can create as many roles as you want. You could create one from scratch, and there's a lot of granular options to use, or you could start from a template. In this case here, we'll go to Limited Restore. We could rename this to whatever you want, maybe Help Desk or Power Users, and you'll see under the permission settings for this template, you would be able to <clears throat> have a user that is given these permissions log in and be able to restore operations across the four different M365 applications. However, they would have some restricted access. In Outlook's case, you would see that somebody logged in as a help desk operator under limited restore here wouldn't be able to preview an email, meaning that they could log in, go to restore a email for another user, but they wouldn't be able to look at that email. They also would not be able to download it locally to their machine, and they wouldn't be able to restore it to another inbox, say another manager or something like that. They would only be able to restore it back to the original location. Once you've created the different roles, it's as simple as going into administration users, and you can do this in the full group for an Entra ID group, or you could do it by individual users that you want to add in one at a time. If I click on one of them here, we'll just say Sansa. I could go click on the little pencil icon here, 
And I could assign Sansa the limited restore role or say, no, it, she's going to go ahead and be an administrator. And we could change that around. So we can set these any way that we want as after you've built out the different role-based access controls. Going further in the system, billing. This is where you would see the very different licenses that you've purchased with Veeam Data Cloud. If I move on to system, there are a few things here that I'd like to point out. The first one is the setup Teams chat. By default, we do not back up the messages for a public Teams channel. These are the different posts in that public Teams channel. Microsoft does have sort of like a premium API for something like this, and there is a transaction fee that's charged back to your M365 tenant. So by default, we do keep this off, but you can enable it if you want to, just being aware that you'll get an additional charge from Microsoft directly. If I click on access here, you could enable self-service across the board. We could have done this in role-based access control and added users individually or groups of users that we want to enable self-service for. But if you wanted to go across your entire tenancy to allow them to restore their own OneDrive and Outlook, again, back to the original location for which data was originally uh, set, you can just enable that here. We can also prevent access to this particular console to say maybe the office or a branch office or series of offices where users would have to at least VPN in to get access to the Veeam Data Cloud console. And then as well as if you have existing investments in a SIM or a syslog server like Splunk, then you could add those uh, syslog servers here and send all the notifications and logs over to those investments as well. If I scroll down a little bit further here and look at organizational details, these are items that would all be set up for the primary contacts and then across the company when you first onboard with Veeam Data Cloud. But down here, I'd like to point out that the you can send our notifications off to a support email. So if you have a distribution list, say for your help desk or support desk, you could send uh, all of our notifications to that distribution list. And you can also, if you had the same thing set up and tie it inside of a Teams channel for, say, help desk, you could grab the webhook for that Teams channel and send the notification there as well. Moving on down again to the lower left hand side if I click on support now you'll see there's a couple buttons here for our help center to gain access to everything from uh, knowledge base and then where there's lots of information on there so if you come across something in the logs that you want to look up uh, you can absolutely do that in the knowledge base and the help center will have their user guides and other different resources as well that you can download. You can also always open a support case directly from the console and get help from the Veeam Data Cloud support team. From the main dashboard, we're going to click on Backup Policies and start to look at how we construct new backup policies and do some basic administration of those policies. In discussions with your account manager, you would have went over the different licensing types for both Express and Flex. In this video series, we'll start off by looking at Flex backup policies. If I click on new backup policy, we're going to be able to create a brand new one. We'll go over to a flex policy. And in this case here, we're going to demonstrate what it would look like to set up a flex policy for say Microsoft Exchange. So we'll say Exchange. And we'll call it demo. In this case here, we'll see the storage region is US to East for the demo environment. I'll click next. We could back up the entire organization, but typically what we see is that, especially if we're going to break things up to buy the M365 application, we would actually do this with either assigning it by users, or more importantly, it better to probably do it by groups. The reason I'm saying that is, although we could add users in, every time you add a new user to your environment, somebody comes into the office, adds a new worker, or somebody leaves, you would have to come into the console and do this. If we do it by group, any changes you make to your M365 Entra ID in that group, adding a user in or moving a user out, that would automatically get reflected within this backup policy and you would not need to go in here. So if we do this by group, I'm going to pick on the House of Stark. And again, we're setting up a backup policy specifically for Exchange. So we would simply turn off OneDrive and personal team sites and just be backing up for the House of Stark mailboxes and archive mailboxes. I mean, if I had other groups, I could do something similar here and add that into the same backup policy. If I click OK, all I'd have to do is click Next, say we're going to start this policy once it's created, and then we're going to go ahead and pick what type of frequency we want this policy to be uh, used. So every 4, 8, or 24 hours is by default. If you need something different than that, you can create a policy and open a support ticket and support will help you move that policy to say something like 12 hours if that's more within your business practices and, and requirements. So once we set the policy we want, we would simply hit create. 
In this case here, I'm gonna go back to policies we've already have created and kind of show you a little bit more inside of here. So here's a flex policy that's very similar to the one we just looked at creating. You can see the overall success, how often it's run. So initial backup, then it'll be a full ingestion, and then we do incrementals forever going forward. You would see the number of objects that are processed in each backup job. And if you wanted to inspect any of the jobs, if you click the little eyeball here, you can view the logs, and you can see the different things that were processed in that backup job. If there were any warnings or errors, you could uh, filter that over here by just taking a look at warnings or errors. In this case here, everything was successful. And then you could always export to CSV if you wanted to manipulate this data within Microsoft Excel uh, after the fact. Clicking anywhere in the pane will recess that pane that we were viewing the logs in. If you wanted to go in and edit something or add uh, change a policy, you could go in here and click edit. And this would allow us to either add or exclude items from that policy. And the same thing was if we had set up an express policy for one of the other M365 applications. From the main dashboard, we're going to now click on reports. In this pane here, you'll be able to see that you can do ad hoc reporting, where we could pick one of the four reports, where you have mailbox protection, then the user reports, monthly backup report, and policy summaries. These four, these four reports not only show you which backup policies you have, but it'll show you success rates and who's be currently in protection plans. So you can kick off each one of these reports here, then you eventually you'll see a notification pop up, and then you can go over to notifications where we were before and download those reports directly. As an additional feature, you could also schedule these reports to come out on a regular basis. To do that, we click on add report. We'd pick the report type that we want, give it a name, demo report. Hit next, pick the frequency that we want that report to come out. Click next, and then we start filling in who we want that to go to. And you can have as many folks as you want, or even distribution lists, just by separating them with a semicolon and adding the next person in line. Once you have that set up, you'd hit save. And then the report will appear here, and that'll be kicked off every single day. Again, starting from the main dashboard, if we click on search, we're now going to take a look at the capabilities of Veeam Data Cloud for M365 search across the entire M365 tenancy. You'd start off by picking the application you want to search against. We'll pick Outlook, and we'd also pick when we wanted to actually take a look at the search. So if we wanted to go back in time and look for backups, say going back to July here, and we'll just pick one. Once you have the application you want to search and when you want to search against, then you can start to build out your search criteria. In this case here, I might say I want something by, let's say from is exactly Bob. We'll add Bob into the list. And then we might come in here and take a look at the body email and say it has to contain the word backup. And we would continue adding to this list and kick off our search. Once the search has time to go through the backup job and figure out where everything is, you'll start to see everything populate down here and for that point in time and what the search was uh, completed. I did one earlier and for OneDrive, and if we take a look at it down here, we'll see that we have different ones with different number of results. And if I click on the view results, you'll see here's all the different results that came back for this particular search. I do have the option to click on individual ones, or I can hit control on my keyboard and select multiple and click restore selected items. Because I'm logged in as Jon Snow, who is again a global M365 admin and set up with administration rights inside a role-based access control, I have the ability to restore to the original location. I could restore these to another user's inbox, now I can say a manager. I can assign them advanced options, so overwrite or merge. Or I could download them locally to this computer. And if they were large in nature and I wanted to download them later, I'd click this and it would zip them up. And I would see a notification where I could download them from a link in the notification section. Now we're going to take a look at data restoration. If I go to the left-hand side here, I can select from one of the M4 M365 applications. I could do the same thing with these buttons as well. I'm going to click on Outlook and take a look at restorations inside of Outlook. So in this case here, we get our list of users. 
I'm going to pick on, let's pick on Sam O'Tarley here. I could restore his entire mailbox if I want to. It allows me, depending on how he was set up in backup jobs, if he was set up with both Express and Flex, you would see those options here for the mailbox. I could do an Express full restore, in which case I would pick the rest, uh, restore point time, pick the date and the time frame in which I wanted to do the restore, click OK, and then click full extor, uh, Express restore. This will completely replace the mailbox as it exists. I could do the same thing with Flex. Again, it's different time periods and how fast the recovery time objective would be depending on the option you've chosen here. Additionally, with a Flex Restore, again, it can be very granular, so I can go into some Samuel Tarly's inbox. I could do it by subfolder if I want and restore the entire folder, or I might want to restore individual items. And in this case here, I could pick an individual item, say Restore, Again, I'm logged in as Jon Snow, the Global N365 admin, so I have a lot of options in here. If I were inst logged in as a help desk operator, I might not be able to do some of these functions. In this case here, I can see that I can look for changed items, missing items. I can restore. When I do a restore, I can mark them as unread. I could send this item off to another manager or somebody else that needed to receive it. And I could also download the MSG file locally. So you do have a lot of options. You can also do a compare with production, meaning that if I picked a different date and time, let me go back and pick a random date here. And we'll go back into Samuel Tarly's inbox. And if I picked this email here, we'll say, and clicked on compare with production, you'll see this is going to do a compare with the, the backup job that we were looking at and the production item that is currently in play for that uh, end user. Because I'm the, an M365 admin settings within RBAC controls for Veeam Data Cloud, I can click on View Body, and what it's going to do is compare the two from the backup to the production level as well. And then I can ensure that I'm restoring the, the item that I really do want to restore and make sure this is exactly what I want when I do that restore. OneDrive will feel very similar. Pick on the user that you want pick on the files that you want to do a restore or multiple files, and then just click restore. And again, you could go back in time with a flex restore. You can go back as long as the restoration uh, period is set up for the repository. So if you had set up for initially seven years, you go back seven years and pull something out of your OneDrive. If it was express, remember that is a limited to a one year restoration. Something that, again, if you want to go through the different types of licensing registration for Express, Flex, and Premium, that gives you the best of both worlds for Express and Flex, that's some, a conversation that you can have with your account manager, and we would encourage that session. If I look at SharePoint, SharePoint does give us the option not only to restore like documents within folders that are hosted in SharePoint, but it also allows us to restore items like if I can find, let's say, House of Starks here, I can restore subsites or I can restore additional content that was hosted maybe as uh, document libraries and things like that. And, and so not only can restore items that might have originally been hosted in a network attached storage in your local environment, but now you're taking advantage of your M365 you know, licensing to use to put those same documents inside of SharePoint or OneDrive, you can do the restorations here. And again, you can also restore subsites or the entire main site and for that particular SharePoint um, uh, connection as well. Teams will be very similar. Teams is sort of an overlay to a lot of the other M365 applications, and but you can restore an entire Teams channel. With that, if you set up posts, you could restore the posts, files that are associated with it, and as well as all the other metadata for uh, who is the owner, the associated members of a channel, things like that, those will all come back now as part of that metadata on a restore. And now with that being said, I'm going to click on the green beam icon and go back to the main dashboard. Thank you for joining us today and doing this demo with the Beam Data Cloud for M365. We hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, we encourage you to set up an appointment with your account manager and bring some of our specialists in to speak with you today. Have a great day.